what does it take to get up? What does it take to get up when you lose your dream job the day before? What does it take to get up when the team loses the championship game because of your mistake? What does it take to get up when life isn't going the way it's supposed to be going? Five years ago, I was fighting for custody of my 15-year-old daughter Zoe and helping her navigate the mysterious world of adolescent psychiatric hospitals. When Zoe came home from the first hospitalization, I figured that it was all behind us, that we could just move forward. But what I didn't know is that once hospitalized, any transition back to normality is not instinctive. And what used to be familiar is now foreign. Zoe was struggling over a period of many months. The good news was that after the fourth hospitalization, Zoe was able to step down to a group home where she could then stay with me on weekends at my house. Now, these weekends were awesome because we would go to the mug and muffin for breakfast on Sunday morning, or we'd go to the beach and in the middle of winter, and we would pick up cold, wet, sandy rocks. Or Zoe would be up in her room for hours, listening to music, writing songs, and playing her ukulele. This one particular Saturday, I pick up Zoe, and we're back at my house. She's upstairs in her room, listening to some music, burning her favorite jasmine incense, and applying this really cool henna tattoo with a sun design on her hand. I head upstairs, Hey, Zozo, you want to call some friends? I really don't have any. Okay, well, do you want to make some kale chips while the ink is drying? Yeah. <laughs> Cleaning up the kitchen afterwards, she says, I'm tired, Dad. I'm going to go to bed now. Okay, pumpkins, I love you. I love you too, Dad. I'm back at my computer for doing some work, and I head upstairs to say good night. Opening Zoe's bedroom door, I can hear Jonathan Frusciante's guitar on the stereo. A string of Christmas lights is lit around the perimeter of her room, but she's not in her bed. In the dim light, I can see she's standing in her closet. I'm sure she's about to jump out and scare me as a joke. Zoe, what are you doing? She didn't answer me. She wasn't standing in her closet. I called 911. Five days later, over 900 people came to Zoe's wake. 900. Her friend Kelly came up and she was just sobbing. All I could do was put my arms around her and say, it's going to be okay, sweetie. Zoe would want you to remember all those good times that you had together, right? Another friend, Sarah, came up and said, I'm so sorry, Mr. Hodgson. Zoe was so nice to me, and she was always smiling. I don't get it. I don't get it either, sweetie. But it's going to be okay. As more and more people came up to share stories of Zoe with me, to tell me how much she impacted them, inspired them, and gave them hope, and to tell me that they were sorry for my loss, I was sorry for their loss because I knew what we were all going to be missing. Her energy, her smile, her badass ukulele skills, and really her philosophy of life to just be. I don't remember a single word that was said at the funeral the next morning. I will forever remember the audible click of the casket cover as it was closed for the final time. People handle death in different ways. For some, it's too unbelievable for it to be believable. For others, there's a relief because their loved one was suffering for a long time. I was in a fog, and it was wreaking havoc on me mentally, physically, and emotionally. I couldn't eat. I could barely sleep, and I had these phantom pains in my body that I couldn't explain where they came from. This is where most people stay after a loss, in some abyss of survival. In living through one of the most horrific things that a human can endure, here's what I know to be true. 
it will be okay when we choose to make one simple decision to get up. In the aftermath of loss, our instincts kick in. I have to survive this. Wait, will I survive this? Do I even want to survive this? All I could think is, is she okay now? Did I do enough for her? What kind of dad lets his daughter die? Some questions you'll never say out loud because they're too dark, and they only amplify the pain to excruciating levels. But why is it that when we have big losses in life, we, we are at best a survivor? In, in a recent poll I conducted in an online grief support group, 63% of the participants said that they were just surviving after their loss. They were just trying to make it to the next day and some to the next hour. When a loss is from suicide, the statistics are heart-wrenching. In 2016, over 44,000 people took their life in the U.S. Even more shocking is that resources are focused on teaching us that survival is the end game. It's not. So whether it's the death of a loved one or any major setback in life, we have to think differently about what it takes to get up. That dream job you lost the day before may have just freed you up to pioneer new advances in your industry. Your mistake that cost the team the game, that may have given way for a new strategy for next season. And what if we created the space to take life's biggest losses from being just survivable to a place where we continuously choose to get up? We can. Here's where you start. First, decide that you will survive. People take this for granted. This isn't a movie where after 10 minutes you're over a loss and you're on to the next part of the journey. No. You have to make a decision every single day whether you're going to survive or not. And it's not easy. It takes time. And it requires more tears than there are tissues for sometimes. I was reminded of why this was important very soon after Zoe died. In the many handwritten letters that I received from her hospital friends, it seems that on more than one occasion, Zoe was the first person to come up to them because she could just tell it was their first time in an adolescent unit. She would hug them and say, hey, I'm Zoe. There's nothing to be afraid of. It's not that bad here. And by the way, when the counselors aren't looking, you can draw penises on the wall. I don't think Zoe fully understood the impact she had on her new friends at that time, but she clearly helped them to choose to survive. And look, as much as survival is necessary, it must be temporary. We can choose to live out the rest of our days in this mode like many do, or we can let it sink in that just because we experience loss in life, that doesn't mean that our lives are lost too. Next, explore your badass self. Now, here's what I mean by that. I'm not talking about putting yourself in dangerous situations. I'm talking about immersing yourself in the things that help keep you moving forward. I'll never forget a conversation that I had with Zoe's best friend, Jerry, in my kitchen. He said, Zoe's gone. What am I going to do now? Jerry, you're going to get up in the morning and you're going to put your feet on the floor. You're going to get dressed, get breakfast, go to school, come home, have dinner, and practice the guitar for hours like you have since you were four years old. And then go to bed. The next day, the same thing until this becomes the norm despite how you feel. You see, it's almost impossible to get up if we remain in a survival mode. But 
by immersing yourself in the things that you love to do, you continuously find ways to keep going. Jerry caught on pretty quickly, too, because five years later, through his ups and downs, his band is now touring most of the U.S. and has its sights on Europe in the coming months. Finally, realize you're not done. When you accept that we have a purpose for being here, if even for 15 years, then you are well on your way to getting up regardless of the struggles that you face. When Zoe was hospitalized, I would visit her often. When she wasn't in trouble for drawing penises on the wall, <laughs> uh, she would introduce me to her friends, the staff, or the doctors and say, this is my dad. And when Zoe took her life, it was really her friends that pushed me to think differently about why I was here. I thought my purpose was to raise Zoe. But now with her friends, I'm Zoe's dad for them. I'm not done yet. Imagine making an impact with just one person because you chose to get up from the most horrific thing that happened, not to you, but for you. Decide to survive the things that aren't supposed to happen in life. Immerse yourself not in the heartache, but the heart songs that you can play over and over again. And put your hand on your heart. That's your reminder that you're not done yet either. In Greek, the name Zoe means life. And I know Zoe would be so pissed off with me if she knew that I was wasting all of those good memories on her life by not living mine. I've chosen to get up and live beyond the loss. You can too. We all can. Join me. It'll be okay. Thank you.